Hey everybody. I want to thank those of you that are watching the replay right now because I'm just waiting for a few people to jump on live. Um, for being understanding about um, our having to on the fly reschedule this. Um, lots of uh, fun living here in the country uh, with a no internet service basically. So it looks like we're up and running and I'm able to do this Facebook live without any issues. So um, I'm excited about tonight's topics. Hey, Amy, uh, CBD oil and essential oils and how they can work together. Hey, Jamie. Uh, it is something that I have been really enjoying learning more about as our family is using CBD oil as um, part of our wellness arsenal and just learning so much about them. So about CBD oil and how they can interact with essential oils. So I am going to jump right into the content to be respectful of your time. I am going to, um, I have a script in my hand just so I stay on target and also have this amazing book, which if you guys haven't, sorry, let me haven't checked it out. It's, I know it's backwards. I'm sorry, guys. Um, the power of CBD and essential oils. This is by Dr. Olivier Winker. Uh, we affectionately call him Dr. Ollie. A ton of great stuff in this book. Do you love my bookmarks? Um, <laughs> so really, really good stuff. So we're going to get into some of this. We're going to talk about some of the myths and some of the facts about how CBD oil works. Um, so let's really, um, by the way, hi, I'm Tammy. And for those of you that are not a member of our Young Living family, um, this is why I'm here and we're teaching this summer school class for those of you who are not members, but also for our members um, to just provide some more education. And, um, you know, that is trying to find more natural solutions for wellness is what led me to Young Living and why I do what I do um, and have just, it's become a passion of mine to educate people on how to use essential oils and other natural means, nutrition, et cetera, to live a healthier, happier life. And we're going to talk a little bit about why I chose Young Living and why I am so incredibly excited that they have a CBD oil. And that goes down to the seed to seal. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So just remember that seed to seal promise. And we'll mention that here shortly. All right. So what is the difference between CBD and marijuana? Is it the same? This is one of the myths is that, oh, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, and and, you know, so therefore I don't even want to mess with it. Well, it is not. And obviously we're hearing more and more about CBD oil. This um, is, you know, it's, it's almost like it's a huge fad at the moment. But just be rest assured that as um, laws have changed, it's not going anywhere. And so it's best to go ahead and jump on board and learn all you can and learn how this might be able to um, bless your family and um, help you in your health and wellness journey. Hey, Kate. Um, so... It's, you know, really becoming a staple around the world. And, and we're just going to keep in, keep in mind, I am not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I am just here to educate you guys on all the information that these amazing doctors and, and scientists and all that have accumulated for us. So I am the messenger of their good news. <laughs> all right. So we're going to talk first and foremost, CBD is not marijuana. They are both from the same plant, which is the cannabis or the hemp plant, but they're very different varieties. If you, um, study them, you'll realize there's a difference between when the, uh, the hemp plant is grown with, there is a male and a female. Did you know that? Male and female hemp plant parts. And obviously we know that all, you know, flowers and plants require pollination and whatnot to reproduce and to, you know, flower and to do what they do. Well, marijuana is produced when the hemp plant is grown without the male variety present. And the resin produced from this small um, hair-like appendages called trichomes of all female plants, they're full of THC. That's what produces the psychoactive effects associated with marijuana. So THC, bad, CBD, good. So CBD or cannabidiol is a natural substance from another variety of hemp. And it's produced when the hemp plant is grown with both the male and the female plant. The resin produced is full of CBD, which does not contain the same psychoactive effects as THC and only has very small amounts of THC. So there is still some THC in um, CBD, but not like there is in marijuana. All right, so just remember that. Marijuana, high THC, psychoactive effects, CBD, low THC, therefore removing the psychoactive effects. And as we refine this process and create CBD oils, that's what we're looking to remove, okay? So 
What's the history? This is, I found this incredibly insightful and interesting um, that with CBD being a natural substance from the hemp plant, hemp originated in Asia and in the Middle East thousands of years ago, and it's since spread worldwide, right? Um, and it showed up in the United States back in the 16th century. In fact, farmers at the time were fined a certain amount if they did not have a specific percentage of their crop being hemp because of how useful it was. It can be used for paper, food, fiber, construction materials, clothes, and all kinds of other products. So it was like mandatory. You had to farm hemp back in the day. So what changed? Really? Okay, so why did it become such a taboo thing? So in the 1920s, neg a very negative media war. How many of you are familiar with this uh, about the negative impact our media can have? Uh, was waged on hemp and quote-unquote marijuana due to financial, a.k.a corrupt reasons. So it eventually was deemed a schedule one controlled substance. Um, and that means that when something is scheduled as a schedule one, it means that it has no benefit and a high potential for abuse. However, in July of 2018, CBD was downgraded from the worst it could be, which was a schedule one all the way to a schedule five controlled substance, meaning it has some benefits and a potential for abuse is really low. So why did that happen? Well, it's funny because the FDA changed the category because there was a drug that was being developed containing CBD called Epidiolex, so it could be sold. So um, it's interesting how all of a sudden something could be downgraded from a Schedule 5 to a Schedule 1 because um, there's a pharmaceutical drug that needed to be released uh, for profiting. So just, you know, let your mind go where it may. Uh, but finally, in December of 2018, this is where the good news, it came, it went all the way from the Schedule 5 to completely off the um, schedule of, of drugs like that and became an unscheduled substance because of the Hemp Farming Act of 2018. Um, so it, and that was defining uh, it as cannabis with less than 0.3% THC. So that then became legal in all 50 states at that point. And that was the 2018 um, Hemp Farming Act. Now, you do still need to know your own state laws, depending on where you are. Some states are still imposing their own regulations, um, and they may be more strict than what the federal law is. So do your research where that's concerned. But just know that according to federal mandate, hemp is now legal as long as it contains less than 0.3% of THC. Okay, now why would we want to have this in our life at all? It's legal, that's great, but why do we want it? So did you know that you have an endocannabinoid system in your body? Did you know that? Endocannabinoid system. So um, it is a biological system that's composed of endocannabinoids, which are endogenous lipid-based, are you ready for the science? Lipid-based retrograde neurotransmitters that bind to cannabinoid receptors like CB1 and CB2. Those are the two main ones that we will mention. And cannabinoid receptor proteins that are expressed through the um, vertebrate central nervous system, okay? So that includes the brain and the peripheral nervous system. So in layman's terms, the endocannabinoid system, or the ECS as we'll call it affectionately, is linked to a ton of functions. And if you want to know what those are, they are appetite, digestion, immune function, inflammation, including neuroinflammation of the brain, mood, energy regulation, sleep, reproduction, fertility, motor control, temperature regulation, memory, pain, pleasure, and reward receptors, okay? So if any of these aren't in homeostasis or balance, that's when the ECS, that endocannabinoid system, sends out natural endocannabinoids that occur in our body and enzymes to regulate all of those functions and bring them back into balance, okay? So you literally have a system in your body that produces endocannabinoids so that they can regulate and, can, and keep this balance in your body, so if your body is unable to adjust and make those changes effectively to maintain that balance or that homeostasis, this is going to increase the likelihood of you developing disease. So that is no bueno. But the beauty of it is, is if for any reason your system and in, in, in its own production of endocannabinoids isn't functioning optimally, you can use what we call phytocannabinoids or the cannabinoids of plants like CBD to help support the ECS and help bring that balance back in. So just like you would use vitamins to bring extra nutrients into your body where it may be deficient, you can use CBD, plant cannabinoids, to help 
you know, bring your own system back into balance and to meet that detriment where it is. So just think about all those functions I just mentioned and think about where you might be lacking some balance. Um, I would guarantee that every single one of us could name at least a few on that list where we're like, yeah, I'm actually not quite, you know, feeling balanced in that area. All right. So most people using phytocannabinoids are interested in the effects of THC and CBD. So let's look at the difference. So CBD, THC and CBD in regards to those those two receptors, the CB1 and the CB2 receptors. So the CB1 receptor, it, they're in the central nervous system. So that's the brain and the nerves of the spinal cord. The CB2 receptors are found all over the body. These are the nerves that are in your extremities, your digestive system, and the specialized cells in the immune system. So obviously these are impacting all these aspects of our body. So THC acts on CB1 and CB2. And when they attach to the CB1 in the brain, that's what causes that intoxicating effect that you might experience with marijuana. Um, It also affects the peripheral nervous system when it attached to CB2. And that's why when you smoke marijuana, you just feel more calm and you might feel a decrease in pain. I'm not speaking from personal experience. Um, It's also why cancer patients receiving chemotherapy are prescribed medical marijuana uh, because the effects in the digestive system will help prevent nausea. So it might seem like THC would be a good thing um, because it does have a lot of benefits, but it's just not a good idea to be exposed to that. Also because it's kind of like it interferes with the body's natural response receptors, it binds and attaches itself to them, and it might render your own endocannabinoid system functioning even more poorly without that impact. Um, And so also, it's illegal. (laughs) And also, you have the risk of developing schizophrenia. So let's not go there, shall we? Um, And also, if you are in a line of work that requires drug testing, you're going to fail because of that THC. Um, that is why you want to avoid marijuana or any CBD oil that's got, you know, any kind of THC in it whatsoever. Um, so what if you want the effects of the cannabinoids, but you do not want the psychotropic effects or to fail a drug test or to be, uh, you know, breaking the law? Then um, now you need a CBD isolate. You need a CBD isolate from hemp. So CBD doesn't bind directly with either of the receptors, but it impacts them indirectly and modifies their ability to bind to our own cannabinoids. So again, it's just assisting the body to function more optimally. It's not replacing that function. It's just assisting the body to to do what it needs to do with our own cannabinoids. And there's another uh, receptor called TRPV1. You don't have to memorize these. Um, That works to control important functions of the endocannabinoid system. So the CBD is going to help with that. And by targeting and using the endocannabinoid system through cannabinoids, in this case, the CBD oil, we can help the body regulate itself and accomplish so many many things so we can utilize what the body already has in place but in a better more consistent way when we're using CBD isolate so it's basically our body's working smarter not harder right that's always a good thing all right so um when I am speaking of CBD oil tonight I want you to know that the what we use in our home and I should have the bottle right here um, it's sitting in my kitchen right now and I'm not going to bore you by walking all the way over there. Um, is that I, we are using nature's ultra CBD, which comes, um, in partnership with young living. They acquired nature's ultra. And this is where that very, very, very important aspect of the seed to seal comes into play. So young living acquired nature's ultra, which already was in production of CBD oil products that they did not have essential oils. And we're going to talk about why we might need essential oils in conjunction with them. But one really important thing, the seed to seal promise that young living has that, that impacts its essential oils. And now also this CBD oil is unlike anything else you will find anywhere. We're talking about the highest standards that you could possibly look for when putting something in or on your body. And when it comes to the nonsense junk garbage that is being snuck into just about every skincare product, medication, food, et cetera, et cetera. Like we just can't afford to be flipping about this anymore. It's impacting everybody's health in such a profound way. And we all want to roll our eyes and say, I do not have time to worry about whether I'm eating all organic or whether or not I'm using fragranced laundry soap or all of these other things. But the bottom line is you guys, when you look and see that 54% of the world's children have chronic diseases, that is not an accident. That is something that's been happening over time because our bodies are bioaccumulating toxins in such a rapid rate 
that it just can't handle this. And when you take into account that about 50 to 60 and even maybe more of us are walking around with methylation or detox, that like our body's ability to purge the junk out of our bodies, walking around with a genetic defect in that area, and we don't even know it because it's not a standard in our healthcare system, which is honestly a crime. We won't go there. That's for another class, another night. Um, Google MTHFR and just how impactful just that one variant is. And you could have a lot more than that. Um, You guys, we have to pay attention to this stuff. We just have to because we owe it to our children, which, by the way, they are proposing that this generation of children might be the first to not live longer than their parents. That's not okay. That is not okay. And it is absolutely directly related to the toxins in our and the garbage that are surrounding us. So we have to be educated consumers. And that's where Young Living is where I stand firmly (laughs) with where I get my all of my products, my personal care products, my essential oils, obviously, which function and have replaced so much of our our pharmaceuticals that we had in our home, Um, all of this, and now our CBD oil. Because here is a very interesting thing about the hemp plant. The hemp plant is what is called a phytoremediator, which means it can, when it's planted in the ground, it is actually known to absorb the toxins and the garbage from the ground almost as a way to cleanse the soil. So farmers could use this to rotate the hemp crop to like, you know, plant the hemp in this area, clean up that soil, and then they'll plant the hemp crop at this, you know, the lot next door, and then they'll plant their, you know, corn or something and the cleaned out soil that the hemp cleaned up, which means the hemp is absorbing as a phytoremediator all of these toxins from the ground, from pesticides to runoff of other chemicals that might be, you know, including there. And that and that is why there is so much adulteration of hemp. So we thought it was bad enough that there was adulteration of essential oils, but there is major, major adulteration that could be happening with all of these toxins being absorbed up into the hemp plant. So you're finding these toxins in CBD oil, and that is why you cannot just go get your CBD oil from anywhere because hemp is a phytoremediator and you have to be careful. And yes, Andrea said she told her husband many times our kids um, edge up in life is their health. And that's right. It's huge, right, Andrea? So... Um, anyway, so we've got to look at that seed to seal promise, which is promising, promising that not one speck of a pesticide or toxic chemical of any kind has ever touched that land, um, while it was, has been in the control and that they weed by hand, that they do everything from the start to the finish, literally from the seed, from the cultivation of the seed, they cultivate their own seeds, plant those seeds in their own soil that they have control over, and they harvest them at peak times and bottle, distill them, bottle them, third-party test them. You could not ask for more peace of mind where this stuff is concerned. All right, so let's get back to CBD, shall we? So just remember, your CBD oil cannot just come from anywhere unless you want to be... Um, introducing all of those toxins via another pathway in your body. So when you take that CBD isolate, so we've grown the hemp and we've got the CBD isolate because we need to get all that THC out so that we're number one, we're legal. Number two, we are not impeding the body's own endocannabinoids um, and those the function of the receptors. And number three, um, because we don't want to fail a drug test, right? Um, But what's missing now? You might see things that say full spectrum or broad spectrum products. Those have a a tendency to have THC present. So when you get down to the isolate, now you're missing that, what would they call the entourage effect? Um, So that's because there's terpenes in marijuana. So that's, and terpenes um, are the fragrant imprint that each plant has. And cannabis is unique, and it has a unique profile of terpenes, and and they have tons of positive effects on the body, and they can act independently and in addition to what a cannabinoid can offer. Um, And there's several known and studied terpenes, and they all exhibit different medicinal effects. And this entourage effect is like the, the impact that a team might have versus a single player. Now... We've had to go to the isolate because we need to get rid of the THC. So now what do we do to create this entourage effect? How do we get that added bonus of the entourage effect and these additional medical benefits as well as, um, you know, to just really amp up the properties of the CBD oil? I'll give you a hint. I use them 
every day of my life from sunup to sundown. I put them in my diffuser. You are correct. Essential oils. Essential oils are loaded with terpenes. And um, we won't get directly into all of the science behind there. But um, it's a huge deal. So when you take a CBD isolate and then you add in essential oils that have all of these terpenes, now you have a CBD isolate that's clean and pure with no THC, but that also has an entourage effect thanks to the essential oils that are now bound to the CBD isolate. Um, okay, so that's a huge deal. And that is what we call what Nature's Ultra and Young Living are calling a smart spectrum product. So it is a smart spectrum product. And again, why Young Living? Why Nature's Ultra? Because they are following that seed to seal promise and they are guaranteeing that number one, you are not going to fail a drug test. There is 0.00% of THC in the CBD oil, but there is also the entourage effect from highly potent and pure essential oils that also follow that same promise. So there is no junk and all goodness in the bottle. As a matter of fact, a lot of people are saying that they respond to a lower um, dosage of the smart spectrum CBD than they might to other CBD oils they've tried. Um, so how can we use the CBD oil? Okay. We know that we want this amazing CBD oil that's now, you know, created in a smart spectrum product with these young living essential oils. So how are we going to use them? First and foremost, you can use it topically. What you need to do is clean your skin very, very well, and you're going to vigorously massage the oil in there. It works a little different. Now, essential oils penetrate very quickly and easily into the skin. The CBD oil works a little bit differently, so you're going to want to massage it very vigorously into the skin. Don't exacerbate an area, but just give it a firm rub. And it's, you know, it's going to be, um, don't be shy about maybe a second or third application even. You can apply this to your temples, your neck, elbows, knees, and other joints that you might be having problems with. Wrists are another good one. Soles of your feet in the back of the heel or foot and shoulders are really great places that you can rub your CBD oil in um, topically. Now, I'm going to talk to you about there's a very gray area where the FDA is concerned uh, and that has to do with sublingual application. I will just say I'm sharing my personal story. Um, and this is not what the bottle tells me to do, but I personally put my CBD, a full milliliter sublingual, which is technically topically in there <laughs> because I'm letting it absorb in sublingually and I hold it there for a solid minute. Um, it's what happens after that, that the FDA would not necessarily label my CBD for, which is if I choose to swallow or spit it out. Um, we'll just say that it tastes awfully good. So I am usually swallow it, but that's just my personal story. That's how I personally use it. Um, now, some people may have sensitivities to CBD, and that's why they always recommend the same with essential oils, that you start low and go slow. If you're going to have a reaction to CBD, it's not going to be anything super scary. It's going to be something like maybe fatigue, appetite change, which could be an increase or a decrease, um, and maybe some loose bowels. <laughs> oh, thank you. Andrea says, sublingual girls unite. Yes. Um, so... Um, you know, and it is affected by your food intake. More, now this is interesting, more cannabinoids are absorbed on a full stomach. And also because CBD is fat soluble, consuming with a healthy dose of fats can increase the amount of CBD that reaches your bloodstream by up to three times. So this is not something you necessarily want to take fasting or use fasting. Um, make sure you're getting some healthy fats, which this is good for you all the way around. It's good for your brain and for your body to get healthy fats, and you know, which are like olive oil or um, coconut oil and um, nuts, things like that. So healthy fats, that's going to increase the effectiveness up to three times. That's huge, you guys. And another consideration to keep down and keep in mind is that CBD is broken down in the liver. This is done by the same enzymes that a lot of pharmaceutical drugs are broken down by. So it is possible for your system to get a little overworked trying to break down too many things at once. So we suggest that you always talk to your physician about utilizing a CBD product. But my personal use and what I have done is I'm constantly working to detox my liver. Um, I do this by putting citrus oils in my water every day that increases the, your glutathione levels, which is your master detox gland, you know, hormone, and helps the body, you know, cleanse things. So look at things you could be doing with your diet. Talk to your doctor. 
Look at what you can be doing to decrease the burden on your liver because that is huge. That's where hormones are metabolized and so many other things can go wrong. The liver is so often at the root of a ton of problems, um, especially hormonal issues. It was definitely at the root of mine. After 11 years of infertility, I realized I had I had an unhealthy, unhappy liver. And you guys, I didn't even drink. Like I didn't even do anything like that. But because of pharmaceutical drugs and other things I'd been taking up to that point, my liver was suffering. So look at a way to detox the liver. Look into what you can be doing, foods you can be eating, lots of hydration, and um, see what you can do to kind of ease the burden on your liver so that things can work a little more optimally. So, um, with the CBD products, we also have, so we have this, um, the dropper bottles and that you can do topically, you can put in a roller and mix with your own things or like I use it sublingually. We also have a calm roll on where you can, it's got lavender and I'm trying to think what else is in there. Hold on. Here we go. I have my list in front of me, <laughs> a lavender frankincense eucalyptus, orange, vetiver, and ylang-ylang. I like to say it like the proper way. Most people here in America say ylang-ylang, but um, I have a friend that says it properly and it sounds so beautiful, ylang-ylang. Anyway, these are incredibly soothing, calming oils. And this roller smells like heaven on earth, you guys. It is amazing. And it comes in two strengths, a 300 and a 600. Now, um, the others that are in the dropper bottles come in a 500 or a 1,000 milligram. And you're going to have a few options with those as well. So there is the Cool Mint. And that is obviously infused with peppermint. And peppermint has got a ton of amazing terpenes in it. Um, some target areas, like if you're trying to decide which flavor, I mean, you could just go with what you think is going to taste good. Your options are peppermint, citrus, or um, the cinnamon. But if you were to be using peppermint, things that we know that peppermint can help support are going to be digestive, your digestion, your immune function, inflammation, neuroinflammation, and pain. Like as far as helping support healthy joints, helping support, you know, it has a cooling effect, obviously. So keep those in mind if you're looking for a CBD product, if that might be some of the things that you want to support. Um, the citrus, on the other hand, it contains grapefruit and orange essential oils. And um, those are known, their terpenes and the things that they combine are known for being really great to support your mood, to support sleep, to support your appetite, and to support your memory. Um, I use citrus oils to help me wake up in the morning as well as to get to sleep at night. They're really amazing. Um, kind of, you know, we call those um, adaptogenic oils, which they kind of work with what your body needs. So that might be a reason you reach for the citrus. This is the one that I give my son who um, definitely struggles with ADHD. Um, the citrus oil is one that he really likes and it you know, has a soothing, soothing property for him but also is really tasty. Um, and then cinnamon. So cinnamon is one of the oils in our amazing Thieves oil blend. And so Thieves, the reason it has cinnamon in it is, is because the terpenes are going to be things that really support immune function, but also appetite, digestion, and inflammation. So that is, you know, those are some things to consider when you're trying to determine which of those oils you might want to do. And yeah, so Kate, I mean, peppermint is obviously um, one of my favorite oils to help with nausea and to help make sure that my stomach stays calm. So um, that would probably be the one that I would choose for you. Um, CBD joint and muscle balm. You guys, this thing is incredible. When I was at convention, can I tell you the aches and pains that several of us had from walking miles and miles and miles when we don't normally do that? Um, and we all reached for this in the expo booth at Nature's Ultra. And I told my husband, we are absolutely bringing a jar of this home. He now has it at his chiropractic practice and his patients have given him so much amazing feedback, really positive feedback on this. And let me tell you about the oils that are in this. It is fantastic. If you're familiar with our Deep Relief or our Panaway blends, it's going to sound really similar, but a little bit different actually. It's got camphor, clove, helichrysum, which is an amazing oil. The properties of this one, you guys, for um, just supporting healing. Um, lemon, peppermint, tea tree, wintergreen, and more. And these work together to really soothe your hardworking body. And it also comes in three and 600 milligram concentrations. It is just amazing. It smells so amazing. And yes, wasn't it unbelievable? Andrea says that she's never had anything like that rub on her ever. And it was unbelievable. Agreed. 
agreed. Like I thought I loved my deep relief roll on um, because it's been pretty phenomenal for me. But when you add the properties of CBD oil to those oils, whoo, it's a game changer, game changer. So that again is for muscles and joints and anything else that might be hurting on you. Now we also have a pet CBD oil, which means it's unflavored, <laughs> but you can be guaranteed that it's not going to have any junk in it because again, it's following that C to seal protocol. And this is an all natural product for cats, dogs, and horses uh, because they have their own CBD receptors and that can, and the nature's ultras pet CBD can activate, activate their CB2 receptor and support their overall health and wellness. Um, I had a dog once upon a time that had some severe separation anxiety. What would I have given for this? And there is absolutely no sugar, no starch, no salt, no wheat, no gluten, no yeast, no milk or soy, no allergens of any kind involved here. So, um, just really amazing products. And I do know some people that are taking that unflavored CBD oil, the pet CBD oil, and adding their own essential oils to it and making their own rollers, which is kind of cool if you want to support very specific things. Like if you have something that you use a very specific blend of oils to support, but you would love to see how CBD oil interacts with that, you can absolutely do that. You can get your own roller bottles just like you do for essential oils, put the unflavored pet CBD oil in there, and add your own essential oils and you know, the sky's the limit, right? I mean, if you know what works for your body, you can kind of mix it up yourself. Now, do you know that obviously um, Young Living has worked very closely with Nature's Ultra to make sure that they've formulated these things very carefully for us? Um, I don't think I would even attempt to make my own muscle rub because that stuff is so amazing and perfect as it is. All right, so you need to know how you can get this. All right, so it is, um, because Young Living acquired Nature's Ultra, it is available through a Young Living membership. If you're not already a Young Living member, that can be done one of two ways. You can either get a starter kit, which is how most of us got started with Young Living, because it gives you less than wholesale cost on all the things that go into it. You've got 12 essential oils and a diffuser. If you guys don't have a diffuser in every room of your home, you don't have enough diffusers. <laughs> um, you've got to get the toxic candles and all that other nonsense out of your house. They are poisoning you um, and affecting your your hormonal health, which means your reproductive health. You're affecting your, your lungs, your respiratory system. They are affecting you. They are. So it comes with a diffuser and all the oils and these oils, you know, cover the gamut of what you would need to support in your life. And if you want more details, we'll post that in the event page about what comes in there. There's also a, a you know, a clean savvy makeup kit or the thieves household cleaning kit. There's a few kits and they meet pretty much any need you could think of. So you can get a starter kit because it's an amazing deal. And then at that point, you have the ability to link your account to Nature's Ultra and get the wholesale pricing on all the CBD products. We do have a basic membership. There are people that are like, listen, I'm not ready to get the full kit of oils. Although I go, are you sure? Because you really need them. Um, but they're you know not ready to go there, but they really need to get some CBD in their life. And like yesterday, there is a basic kit that you can um, establish your membership with. You think, think about how you, you know, throw money at Costco and Sam's Club or, you know, wherever you go and you hand them like 50 to $100 to become a member and you walk out with nothing but your card with your face on it and it's like the worst picture of you ever. Um, well, in this case, Young Living's way more merciful. You don't have to take any ugly snapshot of yourself. Um, you also get a 5 ml stress away and a bunch of samples and now you have access to your wholesale membership to Young Living. Stress away by itself is worth the $45 basic thing. And you are able then to have your own wholesale membership so that anything and everything you want from Young Living can come directly to your home. Um, and that includes the CBD oil. So then you would go to a quick order tab. Um, once you're in your account, you go to the quick order tab, you'll see nature's ultra located there and that will take you to shop, you know, all the CBD products to your heart's content. Um, and Kate had asked if we have any recipes for the unflavored favorite oil. No, not at this point. I have definitely been using the are already mixed, um, oils from nature's ultra because they are working incredibly well for me. The calm roller and the citrus CBD oil being my personal favorites, as well as the muscle rub. So I haven't been tempted to try to mix up my own at all. But I mean, for people, there are people that have very specific things that they're supporting with their essential oil. So they know like, oh, I use, I don't know, let's say it's eucalyptus lemon and something else that they use for their thing. And they're adding the CBD oil and using that topically to support that area even further. So they pretty much have us covered when you think of the things that are typically used, that CBD is typically used to do. One of those three dropper bottles or the muscle rub or the calm roller pretty much have you covered. 
So I am certain that we will start to see as, you know, people more widely are using CBD oil, some recipes pop up. But for now, I just um, use what they have and it's working incredibly well for us. So any other questions before I wrap us up here? Again, if you have been invited here by someone and you are not, do not yet have a Young Living membership, then please reach out to whoever invited you here. Um, if you just stumbled into this video, feel free to contact me. <laughs> um, and Andrew said there is an entire class on the, on the premium starter kit oils and CBD. Yes. And the, there, you know, that is true. Um, as far as looking for recipes, if you know, um, and I can actually, there's a graphic I have, I will post that in the, um, event so you can see what oils could potentially, you know, have certain effects that you might want to combine with CBD oil. So thanks for that reminder, Andrea. But I do have that graphic saved and I will share that. For those of you who are watching this as a replay for credit in the summer school series that we're doing, um, I would like for you to tell me one, re number one question is, why is the seed to seal so important with hemp in particular and, you know, in growing hemp? Number two is, um, tell me, three different functions that your ECS has. And third question is going to be, um, let's see, why, why might you use one of these droppers over another? Like give me an example of why you would choose one of the um, particular flavors of oils over another and for what reason. That will give you credit for summer school. And Chris just asked, um, do you use the rub pertaining to the difference in strength um, and do you use less? Um, yeah. So again, you want to start low and see, because you may not need any more than the 300 milligram strength. That is what I sampled. That's what I use as a 300 milligram and was incredibly impressed with its effects. Now, if you've got some severe chronic pain going on, you might want to bump up to the 600. Um, but again, I would start with the 300 and see how it goes. You can just layer it, you know, more frequently, apply it more often. But I would, you know, start with the 300 and go from there. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Yes, Aubrey, CBD, safe while pregnant. Yes, I mean, it, there should be no contraindications with pregnancy. Um, just as there are with essential oils, there's going to be a certain list of oils that are on the, you know, use with caution list. Um, however, there has never been an adverse reaction ever recorded with a young living oil for pregnancy, babies, kids, adults, and all that as far as like, you know, truly other than like, oh, the skin got irritated because it was a little bit of a hot oil like cinnamon or clove or things like that that can feel more warm. Um, because of the seed to seal promise with young living, I literally trust them with my unborn child and my baby's lives, right? Like it's that big of a deal. And um, so I have, um, yeah, I have used it with my kiddos. I have absolutely. I have given the CBD oil to my children. I use it myself and it has worked really, really, really well. And it is safe. So again, I always tell pregnant moms, like follow your gut. If you're like, I don't know if I should use this right now, then you need to follow your gut on that, you know. Um, but is there any contraindication? Technically, no. This is, you know, a very clean, safe product. And, and as we described of how it's interacting with your body, um, it's not um, something that I would personally be concerned about. I would definitely be using it, um, you know, for what's the word I'm looking for, for support, emotional support in particular for emotional support and potentially for those aches and pains with pregnancy is how I would personally use it. If it were me, I would feel comfortable, but that's going to be completely up to you. Um, anybody else? <laughs> Chris, I don't think you have to be fearful about using that stronger, um, strength. Um, I, again, it's, um, a very, 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 very safe product. And because you are using it topically and not internally, I don't think you're going to necessarily see any of those sensitivities crop up that are potential sensitivities to CBD. So I wouldn't be too worried about it. Although maybe next time you'll be like, eh, I can probably bump down and save yourself a little money, but I don't think you're going to be disappointed with that strength either. I really don't. So any other questions, you guys, before we hop off? Yes, Kate, um, I can post. Now, the link for the basic membership will be my personal link. So if you are... Um, my friend, like you are Kate, <laughs> then, 
<laughs> then um, you can follow the link there. But of course, if you have been invited by somebody else, I urge you to reach out to the person that sent you here uh, to get their link for signing up for the basic kit. But I will definitely put that in there for you, Kate. Um, oh, the broad spectrum and the smart spectrum. Yeah, so broad spectrum products are leaving in, are, are you know, leaving in place the hemp's terpenes, which leaves the risk for, they'll say no THC, but there's always the risk that there is still THC there. And they've lost a lot of the effects of the terpenes in the process of cleaning out the THC. So when you get rid of the THC, you're often losing most of the terpenes and their entourage effect. So a broad spectrum is going to have more terpenes than an, a CBD isolate, but it's going to have way reduced terpenes compared to uh, like a full spectrum or marijuana itself. So when you take the isolate, you've now taken the risk of having any THC at all, even trace amounts in your product, and completely gotten rid of that. But now you've increased that entourage effect and made it even more effective and bioavailable to your body by implementing this, the terpenes from the essential oils. <laughs> yeah, Aubrey says... Plenty of aches and pains. Oh my goodness. Yes, girl. I remember times five. My kids are eight, six, four, two, and about to be one year old this weekend. Oh my gosh. Um, so I remember those very well. What would I have given for this muscle rub? Holy cow. Amazing. Amazing stuff. So, all right, you guys, if you have any more questions, just put them in the comments. And for those of you that are here to get Credit for summer school, make sure that you respond to those um, within 48 hours of me posting this video. Um, using the CBD for um, usually once or twice a day. Um, if I could time it ideally, if I was homeschooling my son, I would give it to him first thing in the morning and I would give, him a, um, give it to him again at lunch. Um, I always make sure that we take it with a meal because of it being fat soluble and being, you know, more effective, three times more effective if you remember when you take it with healthy fats. Ideally, I would do it morning and evening. Now, some people actually like to take their CBD in the evening, like the citrus, to help them sleep. Um, but if you are dealing with an overstimulated, overactive, you know, hyperactive, all that kind of a person, it, it would be beneficial to do in the morning and the afternoon. So you just kind of have to pay attention to how your body responds. But we do ours once or twice a day. All right. I think that's it. And if you guys have any more questions, post them in the comments. I hope you found this informational and helpful. And I will post all those links in the event. Thank you guys and have a great night.